So let's talk about that quick before we move on. Teacher mode versus evaluation mode. So every student in your class needs what to, in order to have passed through the entire page, say they're a high aptitude student in the tonal, uh, in the tonal realm, you want to have, have them have done six patterns individually. So the first pattern, the easy pattern, you do teaching mode and then evaluation mode. The second pattern, the moderate pattern, teaching mode and then evaluation mode, and then the difficult pattern, same thing. So I know some teachers who skip the teaching mode depending on, like, if they know their student. Yeah, if they know, like, okay, well, this is, like, way below you, you're a whiz, you got, you know, you got all this stuff going on, they might go straight to evaluation mode. But that's the only uh, iteration of that that I know. Um, and Gordon would say, nope, not allowed. Right? So he's, he's much more, I mean, this is his research, his, his theory, all that stuff, he'd say that that's completely inappropriate. Why, would it, why does it matter to have teaching mode? Well, I think singing in front of a class is really scary. Mm -hmm. So singing with them really helps that. Yeah, so like social support? Yeah. That's good. Okay. What else? <laughs> you may say up. what you're thinking. I think it helps you <laughs> up with their ideation. Yeah. Yeah, because their task is to compare their own individual voice to the voice, the voice of the teacher. And so when you sing with them, you are, even if they have it completely right, you're affirming that it's right. Because if they're audiating at that point in time, they're hearing their voice, and they're hearing your voice, and they're saying, okay, match, good. Because, um, did, you, did you notice, did I ever tell you if it was right or wrong? And all of you are right. <laughs> I hope. Um, but there will be wrong answers that occur in an elementary classroom, and uh, you don't do anything differently with those you don't move on to the next mode if they respond incorrectly. So say um, I say, bum, 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 and they answer, bum, bum, bum. I sing that with them. I'm in teacher mode still because they haven't passed teacher mode yet. And I don't say, it's incorrect. You need to, you need to sing with me. You know, I just move on and do the next thing. Because the truth is, if they're not audiating, they won't even know. It's not going to help them to say, you need to sing those pitches correctly because they don't know the difference between correct and incorrect, right? So we need to assume that they want to do it right. They're kids. All they want to do is just, like, you know, do a good job. Um, and so if they're doing it wrong, it's not because they're, you know, being disrespectful or something. It's just because they, they are not audiating it yet. So we don't tell them about correctness. We can maybe talk about more that more. So the next, uh, so if that person does that pattern incorrectly, you still stay in teacher mode next time and 
Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's that's part of why we talk about when you turn the page that your low aptitude student, like say in the rhythm category, you remember that aptitudes might be different, will likely be different between tonal and rhythm. And so um, I have a different number written down on my sheet for uh, for rhythm category and tonal category. So say I'm looking at the rhythm book and um, this is a low aptitude student and I have written down that they've tried the, the easy mode six times and then on the seventh time they got the teacher about the teacher mode down and I uh, celebrated inside but I didn't celebrate outside right because and not, I believe strongly in that so we'll talk about that if you want um, and then um, and then maybe they got through evaluation mode which means they did it by themselves but everybody else in the page has already gotten through teaching evaluation mode on the other on the other two but this student has just made that accomplishment on the low pattern, not the turning page. Yeah. Um, so you don't move on until they respond with correctness. That's the difference between informal and formal instruction as well, which may be on the test. It's been uh, a couple of years since I took the test. I don't exactly remember what it is. Uh, but um, informal guidance versus formal instruction, the main difference is an expectation of correctness. Formal instruction is an expectation of correctness. Now, that doesn't mean that you're admonishing your students when they're incorrect. It just means that you're not moving on to the next content or skill level uh, until they have correctness. Great. What else did you notice? Whenever you started us in either a different in a tonality or rhythm, you kind of let it settle <coughs> for a minute before you moved into instruction. Mm -hmm as a way to kind of let the students feel either that tonality or that meter before jumping, just going straight into instruction. And what might Gordon's word for feel be? Audiation. Yeah. Yeah, so audiation happens in the silences. Audiation happens in the breath. Um, so uh, in tonal or rhythm, did, did a breath occur on the teacher's? Yes. Uh, which one? Or both? Both. Okay. Tonal only. Yeah. Why? So we're going to practice in a moment how to give those cues, the tonal cue and the rhythm cue. But when you're giving a rhythm pattern, you are still speaking the rhythm on beat four when you give that cue. You cue on beat four and enter on, and they enter on beat one. And so there actually isn't a breath. But there is a cue that looks a lot like the breath so that uh, your student will be breathing and then saying the rhythm at the same time. Okay. So. Um, <coughs> Let's break that down a little bit, the cues. So uh, in total instruction, the audiation occurs in the breath. Um, that's like, like Gordon is obsessed with that point. He bolds it in most of his books and, uh, and like just like really hammers it home that like if you are not giving an, audi an audiation breath, a preparatory breath to your students, then they are not audiating before they sing their response back. So um, a tonal a tonal cue, a tonal gesture to cue your students looks like everything that you've done in conducting, um, except for no baton. And so we start with our hands down, and then the cue looks like a prep and a land, and we flip our palms up to show that. So um, let's do a one-hand cue right now. Just like conducting, it has to come through steadiness. You can't be moving your hand around a lot and then cueing, because it's not going to help. So let's, um, uh, I'm going to cue your cue. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go, and then you're going to, wait, you're going to breathe, right? And that breath has to be audible. Sure, okay, try it on your own. Go ahead, try it on your own. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and like open mouth, audible breath. I know, I know. It's, it's, not the, it's, it's not the prep breath that you would get if you were conducting an ensemble. It's inappropriately loud for that. Like, we wouldn't want to start a piece of, <laughs> you know, but the point is that, that students will not pick up on it. They will not, like, automatically respond to it unless it's an actual, like, an exaggerated breath, okay? So um, an exaggerated breath cues tonal entry, right? Um, and did you notice how I, uh, how when, there is a tendency because each of these patterns, or at least on this page, is three notes long. 
for us to kind of get a little bit into rhythm. Did you notice how sometimes I would like totally stop or change rhythm or slow things down um, in order to pull us back out of that rhythm that kind of naturally happens? So that's important to keep on reminding yourself because you are uh, an excellent musician that you're you're going to want to get into a groove and a meter a little bit, but that's that's going to be taking up the brain space of your students. You want them only focusing on what those notes are. Okay, what else? I think I was just astounded by the amount of multitasking you were doing, mm -hmm. like walking around, carrying, doing the patterns, and writing things. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of my dance band class. Yeah. So like. Yeah, that's, that's why this is really hard. Um, the amount of things that the teacher is trying to keep track of at once is, uh, it can be just like completely tie you up in knots. Um, so I would say when you start practicing this the first time, don't worry about writing down anything or keeping track of who you went to or what. Just try the concept of getting people, you know, of cueing people to sing three notes. Just start with that. And then as you get comfortable with that, move into, okay, now, did I give them the easy, medium, or hard pattern? Did I do it in teacher mode, evaluation mode? Am I keeping track of what each of those things uh, are? This is like, it's just, you need to scaffold this for yourself. Be a good teacher to yourself. Be patient with how, how these scales come in line, because it's like a lot. Um, and you saw me kind of like have moments of like, ah, like, <laughs> okay, where am I? What am I doing? Who am I supposed to be doing this for? Okay, good. What else? You never did more than like three individual responses in a row. You always put in um, a group response or a few, um, so it wasn't just a bunch of singles in mm -hmm. a row. Yeah. So what what good are the classroom the class patterns? What are those for? They keep everybody in the group. Yes. I had a question. So are those ones that you just improvise? Yes. Because I when I looked at this book, I was very confused. Like. This makes so much more sense now because yeah. they each only have the three patterns mm -hmm. on them. And I was like, I feel like when we do this, there's not just only three patterns that are <laughs> yes. done the whole time. Good. So um, they are keeping the class engaged. They're they're improvised by the teacher in between. So when I'm improvising patterns in between, what might I be thinking about? Like the harmonic structure you're trying to. Outline. Yeah. Because all of the class, the class, uh, the individual patterns on this page are a tonic triad. Mm -hmm. If we just continue to sing a tonic triad for the entire time, we are going to lose our tonality. And so you'll notice a lot of the class patterns that I gave were dominant to try to keep us in that tonality and keep on reestablishing that center. In the rhythm one, it seemed like the class patterns were like one level harder than the yeah. individual ones. They were probably of. even more than a level harder than individual ones. So um, that was on purpose. Like, why? Why would that? Why would class patterns be a good place to do hard stuff? Because of the split second connection mm -hmm. and different levels of aptitude. Mm -hmm. Some people could do it, but others couldn't. Yeah. Well, it's more of a learning experience because you're able to be wrong and not be absolutely terrified about it. Totally. Mm -hmm. So the safety in numbers, so if you're going to have students try something new, having them do it in a group is, uh, is good. But also, uh, since class patterns are keeping people engaged, you're keeping your high aptitude kids engaged in that moment because they might be rolling their eyes and having to go ba 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 You know? Um, the whole point of differentiated instruction in general is to keep the high aptitude kids not bored and the low aptitude kids not frustrated. Because that's the that's the one of the hardest things about teaching uh, elementary school or in general is that you have students in the same classroom that are like you have you you hear our Dr. Tiger talk about our kids they're genius babies I went to high school with Sam their son we were in the same class and he you know is a very smart boy he's got very high music aptitude as well and so you have Sam Taggart sitting in the same room as somebody who potentially has a learning disability or who has never been, like they, maybe they didn't grow up in a household that had music at all. And so they ha they just like don't have the same context. There's a lot a lot of differences there. And, and it's your job to keep both of those students, to teach both of those students and to help that really advanced kid keep on pushing his or her, their skills forward and also to, to you know, not frustrate the, the kid that's behind. So, uh, class patterns are a way to kind of reach that kid that's like, are you serious? 
we're still just doing triple negative. Like, I already know the name for this. Um, so, fuck. Um, let's see. Improv, maintaining tonality or meaning, challenging the board and the sleepy. I didn't do this at all, but there's a concept that you're going to read about in the uh, learning sequences ledger, the, like, the handbook that happens. Uh, you'll read pages one through 38 of them. There's something they call dialogue patterns, which are misnamed. They're actually monologue patterns. Um, or a dialogue with yourself, which is a monologue. Um, so there's a possibility that you're going to be in a learning sequence activity and the wheels are off the bus and like no kid is is answering, you know, within the tonality or meter and things are just like not right. A monologue pattern is a series of patterns that you sing for yourself. Nobody's repeating them. You just stop and you're like, bum, 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 bum. So uh, that's kind of a chance to uh, put the wheels back on the bus. Um, so when you read about that, that's what that means. And that's definitely a, a teacher tool for uh, keeping your back pocket. OK, um, let's talk more about these gestures. We practiced the breath gesture for tonal. Um, what did you notice about how I indicated between individual and class patterns? One hand versus two hands. Um, did I did I do this? Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. What did I just do to her? Sorry, yeah, I freaked her out, right? I mean, like if I'm if I'm a, a this tall, I'm gonna be like, what are you doing? Like, don't, so even even though like at some your kids will pick up on the fact that like I was trying to get Eric a difficult pattern, they might not pick up that that that's what I'm doing, but they might pick up that he's getting more turns than everybody else. So Eric already knows that he's kind of in like in the hot seat, um, and so it's best if I can uh, kind of not show my cards until it happens for a couple reasons. One, then uh, it makes you wonder if maybe you could be next. Um, because you're not, like because I'm not making it clear where my intentions are quite yet, and uh, two, it doesn't do that stare down. Okay, Eric, get ready, get nervous, get nervous. Okay, now go. Um, so kind of helping that to be um, a little bit better there. So two hands for a class pattern, and also like notice where my eye contact was for that, because you're like you're not giving instructions to your students. You're not saying, okay, when I have one hand up, that means that one person is going to answer. When I have two hands up, that means that everybody's going to answer. It's it's all communicated through this like human stuff that we just get this. Like, we understand what I'm trying to do there. And so trying to make your gestures and your eye contact really clear and thinking about who you're looking at and when and, and how that's working is how you make that run smoothly without um, the wheels on the bus. Um, great. What syllables were I, was I using? Neutral. Neutral syllables, yeah. So at what skill level were we? Oral. Uh, oral. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there, there's versions of this of this activity that look like me singing bum, 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 and you singing do, me, do. Okay. And there are also versions that look like me singing do, me, do, and you singing do, me, do. There's like, every single step is scaffolded into the process. So eventually, you will be generalizing. Your students will be generalizing with these activities. Generalizing, yeah, is one of the Gordon words. It's a word in general, but it's a word that he chooses to use. <laughs> he chooses to use uh, to to mean when students are are making inferences when they are uh, bridging the gap between something that you did and like putting syllables on it or identifying a, a pattern that you use in learning sequence activities in a song. Um, like basically making their own knowledge um, come forward. Um, okay, so for tonal patterns, let's get more specific. What was the syllable that I was using, even if it wasn't consistent? Oh. Bum. Sometimes I yum. And that's the part that I'm talking about that's inconsistent. Gordon says bum every single time. That's the only syllable you can ever use. That's not what I did. Okay. Um, he argues for bum because it's um, the front of your lips. It's uh, a bum, bum, bum. 
which helps, uh, like, it's easier to sing bum 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 than it is to sing bum bum bum, or, uh, I don't know, mess around with that a little bit. He has done research that says that, you know, when you use this syllable, like, I mean, like, every single thing that Gordon does is backed by, like, thousands of hours of research. So, um, there are some of me that just kind of says, like, okay, I trust you, but also I'm going to do what comes naturally to me because I'm not going to not be me um, and this robot throughout a classroom. Um, so, basically, the important thing is that it's syllables that are easy to, for students to sing. Um, bum, 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 yum, bum, bum. He actually did use a lot of yums in his own teaching, so I don't feel too bad. Um, uh, how would you describe it musically in terms of, uh, like, articulation and length? You can uh, go as far as four note patterns, um, according to Gordon's work. It's two to four notes. One note is not a pattern, and uh, five notes start to become a melody. Um, so we're looking at uh, two to four note patterns, and when they're tonal, they are staccato. They're separated. We're not trying to go like, <laughs> okay? We're trying to hear them as three separate notes. Um, did they vary in length at all? Did I go... Yum, bum, bum. Right? Varying in length is part of what contributes to making it rhythmic. So each note is the same length and it's separated on a syllable that's easy for them to sing. And bum is helpful because it actually closes the mouth and encourages more separation. What about rhythm syllables? What are the ones you use? Ba. Ba. The so same thing with the B at the front. But then if it's ba and not bum, what's the difference? You can raise and hold it out for those longer notes mm -hmm. that you hold it. Yeah, so rhythm is sustained as opposed to as opposed to the tonal patterns. Ba 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 ba. Yeah. Um any thoughts on why that might be? Oh, okay. Um, well it's like she said, uh younger people have trouble with space between notes, knowing how long like rests. Yes. So uh, sustaining the note will help them stay in time. Great. Nice job. Um, so separated for tonal, sustained for um, for rhythm, and I think that might be every oh, it's not everything. I uh, have a couple more things. We have, um, we need to practice the prep for a rhythmic gesture, which might be harder than we give it credit for. Um, so it's a four beat pattern. Your hand looks like this for beats one, two, and three. For beat four, it gives a really clear cue. And the clarity of the cue is going to change the response of the students. Um, so making sure that like, uh, there's a kind of an, uh, <laughs> I probably shouldn't share this with you because maybe I should just fall off. No, fire me. Um, <laughs> so there's kind of an uh, inside joke amongst uh, anybody who has taken this course from Cindy Taggart because at uh, some point in time she uh, said in front of a class full of people that the cue sounds like this. Sing, damn it! Okay, good, fine, good. I'm um, glad I'm not getting fired. Um, <laughs> so, but that's the point is that uh, with that kind of energy and volition, you are trying to cue your, your students to sing, damn it. Um, and so the arrival of that cue needs to be as clear as uh, using that term, okay? So let's practice um, four beat patterns in Google. You can make them up. Um, we'll do no syllables, just ba, ba, ba. I just want you to practice going ba, 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 hmm. And then leave four beats of silence and prepare another one. We're just gonna do a, a bunch in a row. Because rhythm doesn't lose meter, right? Mm -hmm. You sing, or you chant, they chant, back and forth. No time lost. Ready, go. Careful not to prep too early. Ba, 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 ba. Yes, still kicking the beats. Ba, 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 ba. on beat four, landing on beat one, keeping everything in meter. Um, do you think that your students are going to answer you back accurately every time? Right? 
you need to leave four beats of silence for them no matter what sound they give back to you. You need to keep them moving. Okay? So they might just go bop, 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 and you're like, and my turn. Like, <laughs> you know, just, just letting that happen. Okay? Um, and then the last thing that we haven't talked about yet is establishing tonality and establishing meter. So can we talk about the first thing that I did before, uh, before advancing into it? This. Yes. And you have, you just did like one pattern. Mm -hmm. And then you have both of your eyes in place. Yes. So you notice that eyes are closed, my hand is over my mouth, I'm giving every single cue that I can possibly give. Like Cindy like holds her hand up and is like, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, and does it that way. Um, you, the students never do the establishing of meter or the establishing of tonality. You do that. Did you notice Leslie do it? She actually did it in a rhythm too. She went, da 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 da. Which is fine. That also establishes meter for some reason. So um, that's okay. But that's uh, obviously not what Gordon says. Gordon says keep it within just tonality or just meter. Um, I, I say be yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making a game, yeah. That's a test now. That's what Gordon says. That's right. Um, okay, so what's the tonal sequence? So on, so fa, B, Re, Z, Do. Yes. Let's sing it with solfege for our own uh, purposes. Okay. If you want to close your eyes and put your finger on your lips, you may. Ready? Uh. Mm -hmm. Ready, sing. So la, so fa, B, Re, Z, Do. And a lot of teachers that I know stretch it out and try to uh, take it out of rhythm. Uh, so la, so fa, B, Re, Z, Do. Just making sure that that's totally a rhythm. Okay. Um, and and then uh, launching in. And then uh, rhythm. How do we establish meter? Micro beats. Macro beat. Micro beat. Macro beat. Um, micro two micro beats. Macro beat. Well, depending on what type of fancy plane. Fancy plane. Fancy, yeah, fancy yes. plane. So four macro beats. Yeah. Right, four macro beats, and then it's fancy plane, fancy plane. So uh, if it's triple, it's ba 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 ba. If it's duple, it's ba 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 ba. Make sense? And it's the same thing here. Let's practice it. Uh, duple. Ready, go. Ba 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 ba. Triple. Ready and go. Ba 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 ba. Seems simple, but um, sometimes that can be the thing that throws us. So, great. Um, okay. And the last thing, I promise, is how we keep track of who's done what. Um, oh, okay. Oh, there you go. So, if you open up your tonal or rhythm registry book right now, you'll see that uh, it has, like, over the top, it has the three patterns. Uh, the easy, the medium, and the difficult. And then below it, it has this box with uh, like a grid. So that's for writing your student names. Um, so I might say, uh, okay, and say Jake is, uh, this is a tonal page. Say Jake has high aptitude. Um, I would put a line above his name. Um, say Jillian has medium aptitude, I do nothing. And um, say David has low tonal aptitude, haha. <laughs> have you heard this guy? Does <laughs> <laughs> not have low tonal aptitude. Um, I would put a line underneath. So this is an indication there. Some teachers also write the score, like the actual number of what their aptitude is in there. I think that's too much information for me in the moment. I've already got all of these other things that I'm thinking about. I don't want to negotiate numbers as well. Um, so that's that's my personal opinion. But if you're somebody who functions well with that, give yourself every piece of information you could use. That's fine. Um, when you uh, when you have a failed attempt, um, put a dot. So. Uh, Jake wouldn't have had a failed attempt because he's got high tonal aptitude, but David's really struggling. So I might look at this page right here and see and see that David has attempted the easy pattern uh, 
12 times and uh, has not yet gotten it in teacher mode. So here, here's how I'm tracking David's progress, right? This is, a, this is a, a simple enough system that in the moment I put a dot next to his name, didn't go well, moving on, okay? Um, Jake has completed teacher mode and evaluation mode in the easy pattern, teacher mode and evaluation mode in the medium pattern, and teacher mode in the difficult pattern. So when I go to Jillian the first time and I do teacher mode and she's successful, I do a vertical line. And then when uh, uh, we get to evaluation mode and she's successful again, I do a horizontal line. And uh, it continues so until all of your, 80% of your high aptitude kids have three pluses, 80% of your medium aptitude kids have two pluses, and David, bless his heart, finally did it. And 80% and of his low aptitude colleagues. Um, then we turn the page. Yeah. So the medium aptitude person had, had the easy pattern down and then got to the medium but didn't, wasn't able to do it at first. Did they still get that? Yes. So yeah, every, every, uh, every failed attempt gets a dot. Okay, um, so do you, well, you seem to have it in like quadrants. Mm -hmm. So like, would you have the like, Plus and a first one, and then would you have the dots first? And yeah, so maybe uh, maybe we'd have a plus here, and then like the evaluation mode didn't go well, so I might just like put a dot there. It's not perfect. Yeah. It's just a way to keep track, you know, to try to keep track as best you can. Or maybe like we go there, and then there's, you know, an issue with that. But the truth is that you're likely not going to have failed attempts in between successful attempts. Uh, you're more likely to have failed attempts at the first level. Um, so just in, in general, like they're like that is just less common. Um, yeah. Is that all kind of ringing true for you? Okay. Um, and that's just that's just easy enough there. I also know um, most teachers who are do in the classroom right now um, take a picture of every book of the total and rhythm registry there and put it on their iPad. And uh, they keep track of each class on their on like iPad dots instead. Um, keeping in mind that each class, so remember, 500 plus students by the time each class needs to have like their uh, their stuff set up before school begins or right after you give them the uh, uh, the aptitude test. Yeah. So you might have like a grid for each class that you save, and then you superimpose on the top of that document. Um, back in the day before computers, teachers would just go through and write all of these things. Or make a bunch of copies of this book. Yeah. So, let's thank our lucky stars that we live with technology. Okay. So, the last 20 minutes of class are going to be spent with, uh, in small groups, just giving first attempts to this. Um, you, you might think that uh, you, know, you want to jump ahead and try to keep track of everything and do all that stuff right now. That's fine if you want to. Um, but just, just remember that this is gonna, this is, there's a lot of stuff that we just talked about, and so the overthink is real. And uh, give yourself a little bit of room to you know, just have overthink right now, and maybe it didn't go perfectly, but you're just going to try out some of this stuff right now. So let's look at the, um, why don't you do the same one that I did for tonal? which is Tonal Unit 1, Section A, Criterion 3. Nothing is uncomplicated in Gordon's rule. Um, so that's in the green book. Um, like, it's just a couple pages in. Do you have your books? I don't know. Not really. Oh. I don't know where we're bringing in the whole thing. Because we bought, like, 20 books for this class. Yeah. yeah. And then all of those. Okay. These ones, are the, you do need to have these if you're going to teach elementary school and also for this class. <laughs> Um, this is, these are the learning sequence activities. I didn't get that for some reason. I did not make that connection. So I went into the, the classroom and was like, I need to find, like, I need to get the actual learning sequence activities. I already own them. These are them. Okay. <laughs> so to be clear, the jump right in music curriculum tonal register is learning sequence activities. Same thing for algorithm uh, right, right here. You don't need anything more than these two books to do all of this stuff with your students, probably through the entirety of elementary school, because let's be honest, book two in both these categories is ridiculously hard. Okay, so uh, it would be pretty cool if you got to the end of these books, if you checked some of this stuff out, 
if you got the gadgets close enough that the other side did. Wow, you really crushed it. Um, okay, so you don't have books. Um, sure. Let's do that. We'll put. Uh, we'll just put them up on the screen. It, you don't have to like have these books in front of you to be able to try this for the first time. Can you? Um, can we maybe try it instead with just like you understand the concept of what we're doing here, and it's going to be more improvisatory. Is that okay? Yeah. In some ways, that's a lot easier uh, because there's a lot of constraints that happen when you're trying to stick to the page. Um, so what what you're trying to wrap your head right, around right now is alternating between individual and class patterns, trying the gesture, maybe keeping track in your head of who's done what, um, but just kind of getting used to the feeling of that. Okay. Um, so I'll put these these books these pages. Well, David and I will put these pages up. And um, can we do groups of maybe four, 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 and two? So two groups of five and the rest groups of four. And we're just going to spread out around around the walls here and uh, try to get everybody a turn, just a quick turn, trying rhythm stuff, trying tonal stuff, and uh, get your feet wet a little bit. Okay? Um, and David and I will come around and then. Would you like to join your group? <laughs> Okay, so we'll meet you back here at, at 848. 848. Or stay here. Just spreading out. It's hard with all the packages at once. No, not yet. She said that she would give us a specific just like one extra. Yeah, so the recording is set up where it has like bum, 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 and then you sing so like a bunch of You don't have to do anything. Is it okay that we have Miss Are we okay? Yes. Everybody lunch on the five. Oh, so okay. Oh, 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 Everybody likes you. So I don't So me do. So me do. So me so, so me so. Oh wait, is that? <laughs> now I broke the floor. Are we oh, using uh, syllables? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I guess we don't. Do we do we have to start with the easy pattern first, like every time with every student? Um, is that something that like you usually, or is that like a new rule kind of thing? But in general, you want. Um, in general, you want to start with the first pattern. The other thing is too with this is that while we did set up for ourselves to be able to go, so that's so bumpy right here. If you're going to just um, be going on bump, and you, you can just go. Right, and then do the. And then and then go along the path, and then so then when you're going to then uh, sing with somebody, um, you know, just one person, then for example, the first time you can go. Like that, and then you would sing on, on that first one. But then once you've done that, and maybe the rest, then you would um, give them the pattern and let them do it. So I gave you the media one. Oh, <laughs> I, I guess that's your bad. Hey, you did. Well, <laughs> so this is all exploration anyway. So yeah. it's like if it happens. Yeah, this is <laughs> random. It's, it's no judging. <laughs> well, there's um, no judging. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. 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 Bum, bum
bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum bum
Say totally the same. This is a little bit more advanced because yeah. we're all music students. Yeah. Uh, we would probably use uh, slightly less sophisticated yeah. rhythms and and uh, tonality with uh, younger children. Yeah. But uh, like for for this right here, uh, we're just kind of like finding our own little way through yeah. leading that kind of activity. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just want to know: Is it is this the main mainstream uh, teaching teaching theory in this school uh, for elementary school? Yeah. This would be the first five to ten minutes of class. Yes. Um, and yes, this would be for all the grades in elementary yeah. school. Yeah. And um, it's for music learning theory. Yeah. This is the this is the part that uh, the theory is really like yeah. proud of. Okay. Basically, okay. like this is like important. So, so, so most of the American music teachers, they were against this? No. Uh, no. <laughs> because most American music teachers do not use the music learning theory. Oh, why? So, where, where, what they want to do? Uh, they do or or kodai. Oh, orthokodai. Mm -hmm. oh. So those are two different ways of, of teaching uh, Chinese music. Oh, okay. Um, different methodology. Yeah. So, 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 every, every, every requires most music. teachers to no, no, no. use music yeah. learning theory yeah. to yeah. do yeah. this. Use this one. Yeah. One of my yeah. teachers yeah. did like a similar thing, but she did it on your body, so it's like that was great. Yeah. So, so this is a teacher. Yeah. Oh, all right. Dr. Chatter. So, so like when we would do yeah. syllables, yeah. like we'd be standing up, yeah. and we'd be like, okay. so, so anybody and like comes we had to move, yeah. move yeah. which whatever yeah. pattern yeah. we did. Okay. Okay. Like so like a lot of others, a lot of other schools teach more than I as the main or That's something that I a couple different. Yeah. Like when doing so this, like, like also play like, like, in marriage. Totally. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's something that I have to incorporate. Like, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> You're like, what? So that is a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Memphis was very poor. Yeah. Very, very poor. Yeah. Because I can do so the. Uh, yeah, I can figure out all the most important things. Yeah. And I can do the most things just to be able to talk and just be so happy.